Hi all. Um, this is uh, a part of the uh, population interactions uh, under population ecology. And uh, in the previous um, uh, presentations, uh, we mm -hmm. have completed the uh, positive population interactions. And um, in the coming two presentations, including this one, we are going to deal with the negative uh, interspecific population interactions. First, um, among the uh, negative population interactions, it is amensalism we are going to deal with. Amensalism is a um, negative interspecific population interaction or the antagonistic uh, interaction between two species wherein one species is getting harmed by the other while the first one is uh, not benefited, not uh, harmed at all. The, it is not affected at all. Okay, so it is a relationship where one species in the interaction is getting negatively affected while the other is not affected at all. Okay, this interaction involves the production of some biochemical substances by one species that are harmful to some others. Okay, and these chemicals produced by the uh, species during the interaction, they, it is known as allelochemicals. And what, uh, due this, uh, the uh, production of chemicals into the external environment, which modifies the environment, and the one which produces the chemical, actually it gets benefited in by way of improving its own chance of survival. Okay, that is um, during this interaction in immensalism, one species it produces certain biochemical sub substances into the environment. Okay, and these biochemical substances it modifies the environment, uh, which actually makes um, or affects the other species adversely, and as a result of which the other species it is getting harmed. Okay, so that is how uh, the relation at this interaction actually improves the chance of survival of the species which is producing these chemical substances. Fine. So the, that is why it is otherwise known as antibiosis. This particular interaction it is also known as antibiosis. And uh, antibiosis, it refers to the inhibition or the death of one organism by another through the production of certain uh, chemical substances. Okay. Now, when it comes to the case of uh, plants, it is referred as allelopathy. Okay, so allelopathy has been suggested for, uh, has, the term has been suggested for the um, chemical inhibition by plants or among plants. Uh, it was introduced by Muller in 1966. Okay, and uh, allelopathy can be seen in many plants where the chemicals are released into the uh, soil through the roots. And these chemicals actually inhibit the growth of similar kinds of plants around the particular species okay so a particular uh, uh, a plant releases certain chemicals into the neighboring what you call soil through the roots and these chemicals inhibit the growth of similar plants around the uh, uh, the species and as a result of which the, the there will be less competition okay and the uh, one which releases the chemical it can survive very well in the particular environment without uh, much of a competition okay so th uh, this kind of a phenomenon of uh, um, amensalism is very uh, uh, clearly found in many uh, microbes it is exhibited by many microbes okay fungi and bacteria they produce uh, chemicals which we refer as antibiotics isn't it so it produces antibiotic substances uh, such as penicillin streptomycin uh, etc uh, which are actually uh, widespread in nature okay and these uh, um, uh, the what you call, um, antibiosis or amensalism can also be found in many other organisms like microcystis anabena uh, etc which produce toxins that are lethal to fishes ducks and other aquatic animals where they live okay and uh, um, this can be found in uh, this uh, amensalism or antibiosis can be found widespread uh, among plants more more than in any other animal group actually we can find it more among plants and in microbial um, what you call world okay this is this shows a figure um, of uh, two species growing together in the same environment 
where uh, you can see very clearly the emmensalism. Penicillium is a fungus, right? So it is growing. You can it is uh, you can see it marked penicillium colony, and the other streaks it is re represents the streptococcus, the bacteria. Okay, around the penicillium you can see a small uh, vertical halo, isn't it? A clearer area where actually the penicillin sorry penicillium it has produced a chemical which we have which it is very commonly uh, known uh, penicillin so this penicillin it, it gets spread all around the penicillium colony and this penicillin actually inhibits the bacterial growth in that particular area okay so it is actually inhibiting the growth of bacterium around penicillium by way of producing these anti um, biotic chemical okay or we call it as a penicillin in exact, uh, specifically so this is a kind of um, amensalism or what we refer as a um, what you call antibiosis so the second uh, interspecific uh, population interactions and the negative interactions is a competition we are going to deal now, what is competition? Competition can be defined as the interaction between two organisms that compete for the same limited resource. Um, and this is very specific, that is, they are competing for the same resource or the requirement that is in short supply or that is limited in the ecosystem. And usually, the competing organisms or the competing species they usually belong to the same trophic level and that is why the requirement are the same okay the competition can be of uh, different types uh, that is it could be a mutual inhibition where the two interacting species they compete and inhibit each other okay the second type is resource use type where the um, each species adversely or harm uh, harms the other species in the struggle for resources in short supply Okay, so here the two types of competition, uh, mutual inhibition and resource type. Actually, what are they competing for? The animals, they usually compete for uh, food, water, space, shelter, mates, etc. And in these struggles, what happens is usually the uh, most uh, adapted or well adapted species, they become successful in the competition. Okay, and this is what is referred as referred as the survival of the fittest okay so usually the two species they compete for the same resource and it is for their survival right so it is actually survival for the existence right now uh, what happens is among the interacting species or among the competing species uh, usually one of them may emerge successful and that is actually that species usually will be the most adapted one okay and this is what is referred as the survival of the fittest so um, we can see that this do have a greater importance in evolution as well so um, there, there have been many scientists who had come up with like uh, darwin in 1859 he considered that competition is a uh, very important causative factor for evolution okay because this usually the competition usually uh, retains only the uh, fittest or the most uh, adapted species in the ecosystem. The other species make it usually uh, what you call uh, completely removed from the ecosystem. Right. So uh, um, this is uh, one of the most important aspect of uh, competition here. Now there have been several theories which had come up by different workers and the most important one was put forward by Gauss in 1934. Uh, Gaussian principle, we, we have already referred it under intraspecific competition, but in detail, we'll be looking in, in under interspecific competition. Okay, so the two types of uh, competition, uh, namely the resource competition and the um, exploitative competition, resource competition or the exploitative competition and the next one is interference competition. Okay, so you have two types of competition, uh, resource competition and interference competition. Now, what is resource competition? Uh, resource competition, it occurs when um, organisms belonging to two different species, they compete for the same uh, resource, same limited resource, okay, the same resource which is in short supply. 
and this in this uh, interaction many individuals they scramble for the same resource they compete for the same resource that is why it is also known as scramble competition okay they scramble for the same resource and each of the species gets only a small proportion uh, which is usually quite insufficient for their survival okay and so resource competition is also exploitative in nature so it may deplete the resource to a very lower level and this push the species to a least survival value i hope it is clear that is resource competition here uh, you can just uh, learn the names the uh, different uh, synonyms for resource competition you will get all the uh, descriptions that is first one uh, resource competition the term resource competition is one where the two species they compete for the same resource which is in limited supply Okay, that is why it has the name has come resource competition. Why the name scramble competition? Here because the two competing species they scramble for the same resource and each of the competing species gets only a small proportion of the uh, resource. Okay, and this uh, small proportion may not be enough for their survival. Fine. Now why it is known as exploitative? It is known as exploitative because the you the competition may uh, render the resource. Uh, to a depleted level or it may deplete the resource to a lower level and this again it will push the species into uh, to a very low uh, what you call survival value okay so resource competition is uh, actually uh, depending upon resources in short supply now what is interference competition uh, interference competition occurs when uh, many or uh, when uh, species uh, compete for the same resource Uh, and adversely affect the affect each other here what happens is unlike the resource competition in interference competition the resource is not in sh a short supply but because there is intense competition among the individuals for the same resource the uh, it harms each other okay so even when the resource in, is not in short supply is in plenty when there is intense competition for the same resource this competition may affect the the species adversely okay and often this involves interference competition involves aggressive behavior direct contact and during this what happens is the weakest organisms become deprived of the resource and the stronger one gets the resource almost completely so here the stronger ones survives and that is what darwin was explaining that it could be a factor for evolution okay so resource competition is when uh, species compete for limit uh, resources in limited supply interference competition is when um, uh, organisms compete for uh, resource which is in uh, sufficient supply or which is in, uh, in surplus but the competition may render the two species uh, harmed okay so this is the two types of competitions okay now uh, here we can see <coughs> the, uh, just visualizing the different uh levels of competition okay what is competition different levels of competition in the first figure you can see uh, it is marked one okay two species are there species a which is marked in green and species b in light blue here you can see the two species are completely independent they are not overlapping so there is no competition okay whenever there is comp uh, what do you call uh, overlapping or overlapping refer to Uh, using the same resource okay so here there is no overlapping so the species a and species b they are not using the same resources right so what happens is these two species since they don't use any resource in common they don't have any competition among them and they can coexist for a longer period of time okay and uh, uh, this um, species a and b can coexist uh, without any hindrances now in um, the second figure you can see second and third okay in the second figure you can see species a is lab, uh, uh, marked in green and species b species d in purple color isn't it and you can see how extend the overlapping is the overlapping is too much isn't it a larger areas overlap that means uh, they the species a and species d share a huge amount of resources uh, in common okay so what happens there could be competition intense competition and this intense competition may lead to the removal of one of the species it could be species a or species d depending upon which is a stronger one 
in the competition which is a stronger one it will remain while the weaker one will get displaced okay so this kind of a competition uh, where there is a heavy competition or intense competition for the same resource it will lead to exclusion of a species okay since the, the exclusion of the species is uh, re a resultant of competition this kind of a exclusion is referred as competitive exclusion okay now in the third figure almost the same here species a and species e is given species e in uh, what you call uh, orange and species a in green you can see species a almost completely overlaps the uh, species e okay that means the, the competition is so intense that all the resources used by species E um, is uh, uh, shared by species A. So there is intense competition. Usually what happens is species A may become uh, what you call more uh, um, excluded from the environment. So here also you can see competitive exclusion. So competitive exclusion will result when there is intense competition between two species A. Okay, uh, it could be overlapping one or it could be completely overlapping. Okay, now uh, in the uh, figure 4 and 5, you can see species B and species C is given. Species B in pale orange and species C in blue. And you can see there is no, uh, the, uh, the overlapping area is smaller as compared to the uh, second figure, isn't it? So in the overlapping area, the species B and species C is actually competing for the same resource. Okay. But it, since the competition is no, not so intense, the species B and C can survive. But what happens is, this uh, to avoid competition, to get uh, to avoid getting uh, excluded from the ecosystem, this may find new and new kinds of adaptive techniques. Okay, this interspecific competition may lead to ad um, development of adaptation in species B and species C. Okay, species B, you can see what happens in the figure marked four. Okay, actually the, um, uh, in the flow chart, species B may get evolved by a natural selection uh, towards separate niches. Okay, so this will lead to a new species. It is marked as red, right? While species C, it may uh, be retained as species C itself, specialization into two different niches. Um, so here what happen? we'll be looking into it in detail in the coming slides, but here what happens is both the species uh, use the resource in a way where it is not getting excluded, instead it will uh, start to use the resources in a very wise way. Okay, and uh, uh, what happens is one of the species it may uh, start to uh, restrict itself to a smaller area of the uh, complete niche available or to complete ecosystem available. Okay, and that is what is referred as a resource partition. So we'll be seeing it in detail. So. Two kinds of uh, um, effects or results can be obtained through competition. One is character, uh, sorry, what you call competitive exclusion, competitive exclusion. And the second is actually resource partitioning or we can even find it in character displacement. Okay, so this is what happens. So we have seen the um, what are the major results of interspecific competition. Whenever there is overlapping between species for the same resources, um, it could lead to either competitive exclusion or it could lead to coexistent by way of character displacement. So, what uh, competitive exclusion? Here, one species completely excludes another species from using the same resource. Okay. So, when the two species are competing for the same resource, this could be the result comp com uh, competitive exclusion. Right. Then another one is for the species coexistence. If the sp two species have to coexist, what happens is neither species fully excludes the other from resources, but both live side by side. That is what is coexistence referred to. Okay, here the species minimize the competition by using only a part of the available resource. Okay, so what happens? The two species it can uh, use a different proportion of the resource available and hence avoid competition okay so that kind of a species coexistence uh, can avoid getting excluded so two uh, major uh, resultants or uh, um, what do you call uh, effect of the interspecific competition is one when uh, two species are competing for the same resource and both use the same common resource 
one species may get excluded from the environment. Secondly, if both need to coexist, both can minimize competition by using only a part of the available resource. Okay, whatever limited resource they are competing for, they can restrict themselves to a part of that. Okay, and that is what is referred as a resource partitioning. So these two we will be seeing it in detail. Okay, the first under this one, uh, it is the competitive exclusion principle. Um, it is often observed that closely related species having um, similar uh, habitats or similar niche requirements, they do not occur in the same area. Uh, why is it so? Okay, why they cannot, why two uh, very closely related species cannot survive in a specific area? And if it survives, what happens? Okay, that is what that was what explained by uh, competitive exclusion principle. The ecological separation of closely related organisms is what is explained in the competitive exclusion principle, as put forward by Card in 1960, or it is otherwise known as Gauss's principle. And the uh, term name was given after the Russian biologist uh, Gauss, who confirmed this particular principle uh, experimentally. Okay. And uh, this principle states that two or more species with identical niche requirements uh, cannot exist indefinitely or for a longer period of time in the same place as they compete with each other for the possession of the particular resource. Okay, uh, I'll repeat, two or more species having same niche requirement cannot exist for a long period of time uh, in the same place as these compete each other for the position of the uh, common niche. Okay. In this competition what happens is one species will survive and the other is eliminated and that is what is referred as a competitive exclusion. I hope it is clear. And Gauss in 1934, he explained this or he confirmed this principle through experiment conducted on two different species of uh, paramecium. Okay, the, the two closely related species were Paramecium caudatum and Paramecium aurelia. We will be seeing the experiment in uh, little later. Okay, now what happens over here? When two species are uh, competing, one is uh, uh, about to get excluded, isn't it? So, two, there, are, there can be two effects or there can be two results. One is, obviously, one is getting completely excluded. To avoid such exclusion, the one spe weaker species, it can uh, assume a smaller uh, realized niches and then it can survive for a longer period of time without competing with the other. So what happens is the two species, it can uh, reduce the realized niches. Okay, it, it can uh, um, reduce the competition by uh, reducing or assuming a smaller realized niche without having any overlapping for any common resource. So as a result of which these two species it can survive for a longer period of time and that kind of a uh, partitioning or that kind of a uh, behavior is what is referred as a resource partitioning. Okay and this resource partitioning can actually um, avoid getting excluded in during the competition. Right. So okay. So this was what uh, is a graphically is a graphic representation of uh, the experiment conducted by Gauss on paramecium caudatum and paramecium aurelium. Actually, in 1934, uh, uh, he, he uh, Gauss uh, he conducted experiments on these to confirm Gaussian principle or competitive exclusion principle. Uh, Gauss maintained uh, these two in the first graph that is what is uh, seen the uh, paramecium aurelia and paramecium caudatum in separate cultures that is in separate uh, medium okay and they you can see the, uh, the, blue, the light green and the red graph uh, the curve it exhibits a normal population growth and both of them survived for a number of days. Uh, you can see almost it is like the S-shaped curve. You remember when we studied the population growth curve, isn't it? Both showed the similar uh, pattern of uh, population uh, density um, uh, change, isn't it? So it increased in population uh, number, it increased in population size, reached a particular level and remained there for a very long period of time, 
okay and that is what is found uh, uh, shown by the first graph on the top in the second graph what happens is gauss the um, uh, 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 what you call cultured both paramecium aurelia and paramecium caudatum in the same culture okay so it was kept in the same culture and the graph shows that paramecium aurelia it almost showed similar growth curve as was found when it was grown separately but what happened to paramecium caudatum paramecium caudatum could not <coughs> remain in the competition and eventually it reduced in number okay and eventually it died out so from these experiments what uh, uh, gauss found was that two species of similar ecological niches cannot uh, remain for a longer period of time without one getting excluded okay and i suppose this is clear the experiment was is clear okay similarly uh, you can similar kind of um, competition and competitive exclusion you can find in tribolium castanium and tribolium confusum okay that these are floor beetles nammada ee podigal lakke endha nanchcha nammada aripodi allengil anganella podigal lakke valarana beetle aanu adu tribolium caspest aanu adu tribolium castanium and tribolium confusum where um, when they are grown in uh, uh, together in the same culture you can see one species getting eliminated due to intense competition for the same niche requirements okay okay so other than the this um, competitive exclusion to uh, coexist in the same ecosystem the animals in competition can adapt to resource partition here what happens is the species they restrict themselves to a smaller proportion of the resource a smaller area in the niche uh, so uh, in the habitat as a result of which uh, they use resources in a different way for example uh, which we have already uh, seen in the uh, what we call intra specific competition we are discussing there the resource partitioning for example owl and eagle okay both uh, are predators they both are found, um, i mean living in the same ecosystem but what happens is owls are active at night and uh, eagle in the daytime so there is no competition directly because they uh, are active at different time of the day isn't it so that is one way of resource partitioning then um, you can see in this particular figure all these are um, what you call birds which actually feed upon insects and insects especially insects which are found on the tree trunks or associated with the tree uh, the trunks right but you can see there is uh, the competition is avoided by these four species of uh, birds by way of uh, collecting insects from different depths of the tree trunk okay you can see the woodpecker they dig deeply into the wood and la find larger insects while the white-breasted nuthatch they look for insects actually present on the um, uh, outer surface of the tree trunk and so, so likewise even though all the four species they are uh, feeding on insects from the same tree trunk but by using what uh, different depths of the tree trunk you can see that they have avoided competition okay and this is what is referred as a resource part now the example is over here you can see there are plenty of uh, bird species uh, and all these species are feeding upon organisms in the water usually associated with the mud or the uh, water surface but here they have avoided competition by uh, taking the food from different depths right and you can uh, see that the first one that the black uh, skimmer see, they fished from the water surface while flamingo they feed on minute organisms in the mud right so actually what happens is uh, in this particular stretch of water or the aquatic uh, body uh, there are plenty of uh, food resources and all the food resources from the bottom floor to the surface it is being utilized by resource partitioning and then has uh, what you call hence the what you call uh, this uh, competition is avoided okay this is an example which we have referred earlier but here you can see there are actually five species of wabblers and all these species wabblers are actually insectating but you can see where they actually take up the insect from the first one it, fe it feeds on insects which are found on the 
the yellow shaded area isn't it the you can see the pine uh, on the pine the, the outer part is uh, uh, mean uh, marked with yellow color isn't it so that yellow part of the um, uh, tree it is being used up by warblers for feeding on the insects while the second one black throated green warbler it feeds on insects which are found on the second uh, the next yellow patch so here you can see the even though these five species of warblers are feeding on the same tree feeding on the insects from the same tree but since they are using the insects from different levels there is no competition okay what happens uh, when two species live together sharing the same resource was explained by many uh, mathematical models uh, which was put forward by various scientists but the best among them was uh, by Lotka and Volterra um, it was uh, American uh, mathematician and physical scientist Alfred Lotka and uh, Italian physicist Volterra in 1920s who put, put forward the mathematical model to describe the nature of relations between two species that simultaneously utilize the same resource. Okay, so uh, this is commonly known as Lotka Volterra model of competition, and this uh, model, it mathematical model, it explains the um, what you call um, relation between two species that use the same resource at the same time. Right. So what happens in the competition? This is what is explained. Okay. And uh, they proposed two sets of equations, one to explain the predator-prey situation and the other for the competition, right? But here we'll be referring it in with respect to the interspecific competition for food and space, right? And um, uh, these equations explain the level at which each species inhibit the growth of the other in the competition. Okay, the equation is similar to what we have already seen under biotic potential and carrying capacity context. And uh, the simple equation is delta n by delta t is equal to rn into k minus n by k, right? But Lotka and Volterra, what they did is they modified it a bit. And uh, regarding uh, the this interspecific competition, they used uh, two sets of equations. One is when... Uh, to study the population growth of species 2 in the absence of species 1. So when, when there is no competition for species 1, what is the population growth of species 2? That is what is given in this particular equation in the slide. Okay, it is dn2 by dt is equal to r2 n2 into k2 minus n2 by k2. Here n, it refers to the population size. Okay, n2 refers to the population size of uh, the species 1. And t refer to the time. So d t refer to the change in the time or the time interval. D n2 refer to the change in the uh, population size of species 2 during the particular time interval. Okay. Now what are 2? It refer to the biotic potential. I hope you remember what is biotic potential. That is the inherent capacity of the individual to reproduce and give rise to a huge population. That is biotic potential, isn't it? So, in simple words, that is what is biotic potential. So, R2 is actually the biotic potential of species 2. And uh, K, it referred to uh, carrying capacity. Carrying capacity of the particular ecosystem for the particular species. Okay, K2 referred to the carrying capacity for the species 2. Fine. So, when species 1 is absent or no, it is not actually absent. When there is no competition from species 1, the population growth of species 2 is this one. Okay, dn2 by dt is equal to r2 into, into k2 minus n2 divided by k2. In the absence of competition from species 2, the population growth of species 1 will be dn1 by t2 is equal to r1 n1 into k1 minus n1 by k2. I hope it is clear. Okay, so uh, this is what they have come up with, the Lotka Volterra model. It actually explains how the uh, what you call uh, competition is going to affect each species. Okay, two equations for the the two equations uh, which was put forward by Lotka Volterra model were subsequently modified to explain the uh, simple uh, what you call competition. Okay, and Based on these equations, it can be it can be found that, or it can be deduced that, in the absence of um, interspecific competition, 
each species can grow at its intrinsic rate of growth. That is the parity potential, isn't it? Now, population growth is uh, regulated only by intraspecific competition. So, in the absence of interspecific competition, the population growth is controlled only by the uh, intraspecific competition, that is competition between the individuals belonging to the same species. Okay. But when there is a second species coming up in the in the particular environment, competing for the same resources, the interspecific competition starts. And in the presence of interspecific competition, each species inhibits the growth of the other and tries to bring down the survival value of the latter's uh, uh, of the uh, other species. Okay, and bring down the maximum value of latter's population size. It tries to bring down the population size. Okay. Um, four possible outcomes are possible based upon what they what Lotka and Waltra had come up with. One is both species can coexist in stable equilibrium. That is, neither has inhibitory effect on the other, <coughs> nor uh, it uh, reduces the the population. Uh, it affects the population size. So it coexists in stable equilibrium. Now, what happens during this is both species will be surviving with a, an average population size both will not reach the maximum population size possible okay they they won't be having in, inhibitory effect on either okay on each other and at the same time they won't be having the maximum population size also so they will exist in a stable equilibrium right second possibility is that species one will become extinct when species two exert a inhibitory effect and third outcome it is just the vice versa of what is happening in the second. That is, when species 1 exerts an inhibitory effect on the species 2, species 2 will become extinct. Okay. The fourth outcome possible is both species grow and coexist for some time in a very unstable equilibrium and then one, one dies out. And this is what we saw in the case of uh, paramecium, isn't it? Both the species increase in population as the population growth curve showed. And then after some time what happens? One species, it survived while the other population size came down and it died out, isn't it? This is what happens. So, four possible outcomes are possible when there is an inter-specific competition. Okay. Uh, the first, um, um, it could be uh, what you call competitive exclusion. That is what is referred in second and third options, isn't it? And it could be uh, character displacement or what we refer to as resource partitioning. Okay. And that is where it can coexist for a longer period of time, right? For this also, it is uh, the uh, competitive exclusion. Uh, one is getting excluded uh, after competing with a species uh, sharing the same resource. So, in this presentation, we saw the two uh, types of uh, negative uh, interspecific population interactions. That is amensalism and competition. And uh, we saw that amensalism is antibiosis and it is more prevalent among uh, microbial world and uh, algae, that is plants, etc. Uh, very rarely found in animals. Uh, and in competition, we saw that uh, uh, interspecific competition, there are two types, this, uh, this resource um, uh, type as well as interference type. And uh, uh, the resource competition and interference competition, uh, how, how it is different, we saw that. And we also explained um, the uh, two different kinds of um, how the two species come together during competition and how they uh, interact and affect each other. And based upon that, two kinds of uh, uh, like um, resultant effects of competition can be seen. One is competitive exclusion. And the second one is uh, uh, resource partitioning. And we explained co uh, competitive exclusion with uh, uh, like a principle, uh, competitive exclusion principle or cost principle, which is put forward by Harding and which was experimentally uh, proven or confirmed by uh, Gauss by experiments conducted on paramecium, two very related species of paramecium, the paramecium caudatum and paramecium aurelia. Okay. We also saw. Uh, uh, the contribution from uh, Lotka and Volterra, uh, who put forward the mathematical model to explain how two interacting species in competition affect each other and the equations they uh, put forward and how we can in, uh, interpret the two equations put together. Okay.
so in the coming presentation we will be seeing the next two type of uh, uh, negative uh, interspecific interactions that is a parasitism and predation okay thank you for